I'd like to consider a few characters from the gospel story we have just heard. And by the way, it's one of the most familiar and studied of Jesus' miracles. The outline comes from Mark. Matthew adds the incident with Peter. And John follows Mark's gospel. Not sure why Luke doesn't tell the story, but it doesn't matter. The special payloads, the typical payloads. Hold on. Let me get my paper stuck out from underneath the microphone. You want me to start all over again? The typical payloads from the gospel this morning are Jesus' power over nature, the volume of Peter's faith versus fear, both of which are told against the backdrop of this technicolor storm. I'm going to work on it for a few minutes. Stay with me. It's appropriate to consider the storm first because for us who love sensory input, we're captivated by weather. Where else but in 21st century United States could we have a television channel that's devoted to the weather 24 hours, 7 days a week and get sponsors? We're captivated by the weather, especially unusual weather. And we're right now in the fading days of summer with eyes on the tropics and the mean season that can generate storms that will turn our world upside down in just a few hours. But for churchgoers who have heard this story every three years for decades, we know how to read it allegorically. That storms that come off the Atlantic are frightening, but the storms of the days of our lives have less to do with high and low pressure and more to do with all manner of troubles, dire straits. For us seniors, the storms are probably health issues, maybe financial management problems in a market-sensitive world. For a younger generation, it's life on the treadmill, raising children, family finances, the job security, routine challenges that become rainy days. But for all, sociologists say that nearly 100% of our daily storms are relational. That would be entangled family, difficult marriages, problems with adult children, neighbors, fellow employees, friends, Betrayals of friends. The cold shoulder routine. Call blocking. Canceled culture. Being excluded. Insensitive social media posting. Bad advice. All of the who shot John of broken relationships. All of that creates the storms of Sleepless nights, saying things we wish we had. And finally, illnesses, or should I say stress-related illnesses. According to the American Med Association of Medical Colleges, one in every five Americans has reason to be treated by a mental health specialist. So relationally, we have storms all around us every day, not to mention the subset of storms within storms of the countless paintings of Jesus walking on water. One of the strikes me is the Flemish artist Paul Brill, 16th century oil on canvas, that depicts the storms within the storm of the 12 foot seas, the waves driving the boat ever closer to the rocky shore that could crush the boat to pulp, torn sails, whipping halyards that could decapitate a man in an instant, the sting of wind-driven rain, the howl of the wind, the panic of the storms within the storm. And so it is with us. The storm subsets that always seem to come in threes. Last week I heard the story of a man on a four-day fishing trip out of Ocean Isle who left his cell phone on the airplane in Myrtle Beach. He went to Verizon in Shalot, 
and bought a new self smartphone, which he dropped overboard into 150 feet of water while leaning over the gunnel, doing what? <laughs> he was seasick. When he finally got back to his car, it had been towed. Sound familiar? Ever start your day on the telephone black hole of customer service and then watch your day go downhill from there? <laughs> so we all know how the game is played, don't we? We've all had to play it. We know how the cards are dealt. Life is uncertain. Trouble is capricious. It's never fair. It's never unfair. It's just rock and roll. Self-inflicted or not, self-inflicted or not, we are going to face storms. So what do we do about life's inevitable struggles? Albert Einstein said we cannot solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. He said if he had an hour to solve a problem, he'd probably spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem and five minutes thinking about a solution. I'm not being self-deprecating here, but we all have our share of trouble. I know I do. But it begs the question, do any of us, do any of us have the ability to abate the storms of life? See, then there's Peter, who with perhaps good reason is the perennial target of this story. He is the character who draws us into the complexities of the storm. The drama. Can you imagine the impetuousness of a man who would jump into the jump out of the boat into twelve foot seas? And yet, if we don't psychologize about why people leave the safety of structure to strike too close to the to escape too close to the edge, it's enough to be drawn into the faltering faith that sinks Peter. But see, that starts the flood of facile logic. Hmm? Not to put you on a guilt trip, Christian, but he would still be water walking today if he had had just a little more faith. Don't be like Peter. Keep your eye on the birdie. Take a lesson from Peter. When the going gets tough, you got to pray a little harder. I think some of that has credence, but not much. And not to say that's what bad theology looks like, it is. But bad theology is not the point of the story. Nor is anyone's, any person's measurable faith. Peter may be every person, but he is not Matthew's protagonist. That would be Jesus. So when you take your eyes off, when you take your eyes off Peter, off the storm, and focus on Jesus, what do you see? When you stop focusing on Peter and the storm and focus on Jesus, what, what do you see? You see the reality and the presence of God. The power of of God to do what God has been doing for millennia. Overcoming the doubts and fears of God's people. Simply by reaching into the storms of our lives. God who created life from the water. Walked on water at the birth of creation. Explained water walking to Job. Fixed the rainbow in the sky. Parted the Red Sea. What if the message of this drama is not about Peter's faith or our ability to dodge raindrops, but God's infinite power and the faithfulness of Jesus Christ? Then the point of the drama changes. 
the moral of the story changes. Faith is not walking on water. Only God can do that. Faith is daring to believe. Faith is daring to believe in the face of all that life deals, even in all of our struggles with what faith really means. Faith is daring to believe that God is on our side, that God is with us, that He plants His feet on every cloud and rides on every storm. And what makes that faith real for us is the sharing of it in this community, the Church of Jesus Christ, where people of faith support each other in sunshine and shadow. Faith is our, faith is our strongest gift so that when your head hits the pillow tonight, amid the specter of storms and fears that you're facing, you can close your eyes and say with confidence, Yes, Lord, I believe. In Jesus' name, Amen.